Aria Betswe sent this in to us. Thank you, hun. This looks like a really awesome question. And it says, the diagram below shows part of the female reproductive organ. Well, this doesn't look like a male reproductive organ. Structures B and G and processes 1, 2, and 3 occurring in the fallopian tube and the uterus are magnified. All righty. So, it's, in other words, it's not drawn to scale. So, let's first thing we do when you get a question, okay, to get your brain into gear about what you have to do, you label it. All right. So, first thing, let's start. We can start, we start, we can start here. So, that little B is the umbilical cord, okay? That's the cord that joins the bubba to the placenta. This is your placenta. Okay, what is this? That is your amniotic fluid. And that fluid makes sure that the baby's temperature is kept correct. All right, it also prevents this little thing, this little embryo here, from any kind of physical damage because it acts as a shock absorber. All right, this D is the ovary. This is such a nice diagram because it shows you all the different processes. You start here and there, and it goes 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 and, it goes and, it goes and then boom, we have fertilization, uh, at least ovulation. Okay, then E, this here is the haploid nucleus. Okay. Haploid, because remember it underwent meiosis. Then, so that's your little uh, um, ovum here. And what do we have at one? One is ovulation. Okay. And this then goes to two. Two is going to represent fertilization. Okay. Fertilization in, is when the little, the nucleus of the sperm cell joins with the nucleus, the hap, haploid sperm cell, haploid nucleus of the ovum, and they then form together to form a zygote. Okay, so this would be your zygote. Okay, right. Now, if we look at F, that's your sperm cell. Don't just call it sperm. Sperm is, is a whole bunch of stuff. It is a sperm cell. All right. So in, for example, semen, you are going to have sperm cells and you're going to have fluid from all the different, the corpus gland and the prostate gland and the seminal vesicles, which is all there to help the little sperm cell swim along and have energy and get to where it's got to go, which is all the way up that fallopian tube because it's in this fallopian tube that you're here, that you are going to have fertilization taking place. Okay, so two is fertilization. They said at three, let's just see what they wanted for three, uh, is a process. Okay, so three would be mitosis. Okay, so remember, your, your haploid gametes, the sperm cell and the ovum are created by meiosis so that they are both haploid. So when fusion happens during fertilization, we now have a diploid zygote. So your zygote is going to be 2N, whereas your nucleus here in your ovum, your ovum is haploid. Your sperm cell is haploid. Okay, one set of chromosomes, one set of chromosomes, two sets of chromosomes. And then it carries on to form this structure here. And this one is called a ball of cells or a marula. And the marula carries on and it carries on getting bigger and bigger. And the marula, which in some questions you need to know, the marula will then develop here into a little structure that looks like this. Um, outer layer and then it's got a layer that looks like this. These are where all the little cells are and it develops this little cavity in here, okay? And this membrane around it is called a trophoblast 
And this little thing here is going to develop into the embryo. Okay, and this is what is going to attach here in that wonderful ripe uterus that's, that's, sorry, sorry, blah, 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 I've just realized I made an area here. Okay, C, let's get a nice big uh -uh, blue. C is your uterus, or uh, in fact, specifically, the endometrium. And this here would be your placenta. Okay, right. Now we're ready to rock and roll. We've got all our parts. Let's see what our questions are. And it says, label C and D. Well, C is the uterus and D is our little ovary. So it's the uterus, specifically the endometrium, and our little ovary. State which processes are taking place at 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Well, 1 we know is ovulation, 2 was fertilization, and 3 is mitosis. People remember mitosis is for growth, for repair, and for replacement of cells. Okay, and then you also have mitosis in the reproduction of unicellular organisms, and the one cell, and that one cell will then, like bacteria, they go one cell, two cells, five cells, two, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, blah, 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 and they then, that's how mitosis works. Okay, now, see how many chromosomes are present in the following structures. So, for E, which is our haploid nucleus, how many chromosomes are going to be present in that structure? Come think. It will be 23 chromosomes. Remember, and I'm going to put this here, it's not part of the answer, but it is one set of chromosomes. Remember, diploid is when you have one set from the mother, maternal, and one set from the father, paternal. Then the zygote is diploid. It's got one set from both. All right, and it says each cell in structure G, so each cell in structure, I can't remember what structure G was. Okay, each of these cells is now diploid. So it's going to have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or you can say 46 chromosomes, because 23 times 2 is 46. Right, now, Draw an enlarged label diagram of structure F to show its details. So F was, oh, a little sperm cell. Okay, so let's do our little sperm cell. Okay, we want a nice bright yellow. So if we do the sperm cell, what are we going to see? Well, we know that it has a little structure like this, and then that comes down, and then it's got a very short little neck region here, and then it like goes out like this. And then we have a little... Okay, and this little thing is tiny. Now across the front of our little sperm cell, we have something called the acrosome. And in this acrosome, we have enzymes. They are hydrolytic enzymes. And do you know what their job is? When all the little sperm cells get to the egg, get to the little egg cell or the ovum, one of them's acrosome releases just the right amount of, of enzyme, and that is enough to just go through the jelly layer around the ovum and help it to pierce the membrane. And the minute it pierces that membrane, the little nucleus is released into it, the little heads, the, the, the head of the, of the sperm cell, and the little egg cell just, or the ovum, closes off, and it chops off here at the neck. All right, so the acrosome with the hydrolytic enzyme, so that this little nucleus here, which is a haploid nucleus of our little sperm cell, all right, let me think what else. Okay, so this is the head. This here is the mid-region. 
And there's the neck. And I wonder what this is. Let's think. Hmm, this is the tail. I mean, wow, guys. Really? Hey, folks, head, neck, mid-region, tail. What a thank you, four marks. Haploid nucleus, five marks. Acrosome with hydrolytic enzymes, six marks. And here in this mid-region, we have a whole bunch of little structures. And these little guys provide energy for this little sperm cell to swim like mad. Because it's going to get to that little egg cell. And these things are called mitochondria. Remember, mitochondrion is one, mitochondria, many. But unfortunately, this is why mitochondrial, we are all related to mitochondrial Eve and not mitochondrial Adam, because there is no mitochondrial Adam. Because mitochondrial Eve's DNA has been passed on to, to every human being on this planet because the male sperm cells mitochondria never go into the egg cell or the ovum. But the female's mitochondria does. Okay, so they're the mitochondria, and Shane, they remain in the mid-region at the end of the day. And I'm trying to think, what am I missing here? No, I'm not. Okay, so we've got the tail. You know what? You can also call the tail the flagellum. Okay, and the little tail goes swim, 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 and it propels this little sperm cell forward. Okay, so we've got our little diagram there. How much was the diagram? Let's see. Five marks. I mean, wow. What easy five marks. Okay, state two functions of fluid A. So let's just check out what fluid A is. Where is fluid A? Oh, that's the amniotic fluid. Okay, and they want to know what the functions are. So if we, let's just get some space to write. Oh, I've got space right here, so let's do this. So if we look at the amniotic fluid, remember it surrounds the baby. So by surrounding the baby, number one, it acts as a shock absorber. Number two, if you look here, that little baby can move around here. So it is able to move around and not get squished. So we can also say it allows, now remember, it's an embryo until 12 weeks. After 12 weeks, that embryo becomes a fetus. That is pretty much when the placenta takes over the production of progesterone. Right, then that, that Embryo has now become a fetus. And that is generally when people will tell other people that they are going to have a baby. Um, they, because so many things can go wrong in those, th those first 12 weeks. All right. So it allows the fetus to move freely. Okay. And grow or you can say develop. The little guy can do all the exercise it needs. Okay, the next thing it does is um, it prevents fetus from drying out. And you may say, what? Where's that come from? I mean, how's the fetus going to dry out? You must remember, if we look at evolution, uh, as animals evolved and as organisms evolved we went from lay, from from just if you think of a if you think of fish and frogs what do they do they lay the eggs the males the females lay the eggs the males come and spray their sperm over the top and you've got water around everything but as organisms moved out of the water onto land what happens on land? Things dry out. So we then went, moved on to, or progressed to, am, to eggs, and then to amniotic eggs, which have all the fluid nicely inside them. And from that, we went to little creatures sitting inside the amniotic fluid. Okay, so prevents the fetus from drying out. 
Okay, and I mean, I know that sounds very crazy. And what else? I'm trying to think. Oh, and number four prevents um, uh, drastic, I don't know, drastic, prevents um, temperature changes. Or you can say um, maintains an optimum temperature for fetus. I mean, it doesn't matter how you word that, as long as you, you mention that the temperature remains constant around this little bubba that's growing. And please don't say bubba, say fetus. Right. <laughs> okay, then, structure B transports substances to and from the fetus. I can only remember, I can only think that it is the umbilical cord. Okay, now, uh, name one useful substances, a substance transported to the fetus. So one useful substance, come on, people, I mean, really, oxygen and uh, uh, nutrients. And of those nutrients, you can say glucose, you can say amino acids, vitamins, minerals, I mean, like, blah, 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 blah. But the oxygen is probably the most important thing. And then nutrients. If it doesn't have nutrients, it can't grow. And then name one waste product that's transported from the fetus. Uh, well, you've got your metabolic waste. Okay. Uh, you've got carbon dioxide. Um, what else have you got? You've got, uh, I don't know, nitrogenous waste. Okay. Pick one. All right, but the important thing that I want to I want to show you here is that let me just uh, and I need for you to understand this. Okay, you have got a heart. Okay, that's the mother's heart. Okay, now anything that exits a heart. So if it, if if you have your heart, if it moves away from the heart, it is an artery. Okay, if it moves to the heart, it is a vein. Okay, so if it enters the heart, it's a vein. If it moves away from the heart, it is always. Remember, A for away, A for artery. Now, this blood that is full of, of uh, um, oxygen and nutrients is going to go from the mommy. Okay, and it's going to go to the Oh, yeah, yeah, let's get another color, to the placenta. Now, the placenta's job is to prevent anything, bad thing from going to the baby. Right, now, I want to get this. Okay. So, there's the mother. She's sending her blood, and this blood is going to contain, um, it's going to have oxygen, it's going to have nutrients and vitamins and minerals and all the good things are going here, all right? And this is going to go to all the parts of the body. This is an artery, okay? That artery hits this placenta. From the placenta, it's now going to carry blood to the baby's heart. Okay, so this is your, your fetus. Now, this blood is going to go into the fetus. So, if it enters the fetus, or it goes to the fetus, it is therefore a vein. And the vein is going to be carrying oxygen and all good things, because I'm not going to write all of that out again. Okay, but now on the other side, this little bubba has got to, now it pumps that blood to all the parts of the body, and then it's got to pump that blood via the umbilical cord, because this is your umbilical vein, and this is your umbilical artery. Why? Because it is moving, pumping blood away from the heart. Okay? So, 
This blood now is going away from the heart. That's why it is an artery. This blood here is a vein because it is entering or going to the baby's heart. Now, that blood's going to go back to mommy from the placenta. And when it goes back to the mom, this blood is going to be carrying CO2 and wastes. So your nitrogenous waste, um, your, your, all the, I can't even think about all the different ways, but nitrogenous waste, metabolic waste, all the bad things are now going away from the baby and they're going to the mommy. And this blood here in the umbilical artery, CO2 and wastes. And it's carrying it away back to mom. So this is what causes learners to get so very confused because they say, no, blah, 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 blah. How, how, how can the umbilical vein carry good things and the umbilical artery is carrying bad things and it's the other way around and then it's the other way around? This is exactly why. Remember your basic rule. Your basic rule is arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood to the heart. Okay, and A for away. All right.